So this month, our theme is divine discomfort. What? <laughs> yeah. Uh, paradox. <laughs> we are looking at the opportunity to push past our comfort zone and to embrace discomfort and pain as a catalyst for transformation, both individually and collectively. So transformation occurs by gleaning the wisdom of our discomfort as we grow and outgrow certain ways of being, old habits, patterns, and beliefs. It's this idea that Holmes calls divine discontent. So Dr. Ernest Holmes is the founder of the Science of Mind teaching and the author of many books that is our core teaching here at Ahava CSL. So today's topic is pain pushes until vision pulls. So we all experience pain. It's part of the human condition. And also our human tendency is to want to avoid pain and discomfort at all costs, yes? You all agree with me? <laughs> But what if instead we chose to lean in instead of avoiding the pain? To lean into the pain as an invitation for deeper love, for expansion, and as an invitation to know our own strength and expand our consciousness. So I'm sure many of us have had a journey at one point, if not many, in our lives where we have been pushed by the pain until the condition, the circumstance, the job, the relationship, the addiction is unbearable, yes? And for me, this looks like a number of years ago when I was kind of um, first stepping into ministry. I've been doing it for so long, y'all, but, you know, this was a transition because I started out as youth director in youth ministry over 20 years ago, 25 years ago, maybe 20, yeah. So as I was moving into really saying yes to this calling of ministry, I was serving at a community in Chicago, and it was pushing me to grow beyond my comfort in so many ways. And at first, it was exhilarating, right? I was growing and expanding, and, you know, it was uncomfortable and I was in it, right? I was in it to win it, and it was, it was what I loved to do and who I was here to be. But then it got to a point where it started to feel really hard and get really painful. And I kept saying to myself, like, there's got to be another way, right? I kept being like, there's got to be another way. And at this point, I was not in full leadership, right? Like I was kind of serving as this assistant role, and I was really good at supporting all the things of the vision of the lead. And yet it started to get to a point where it didn't fit anymore, right? And there was this inner struggle with... Um, how I was showing up, and also what was being asked of me, right? The long hours, always on call. Growth and expansion to a point, but then pain. And began to realize the unhealthy and toxic nature that that environment had come, become. And it was through that awareness and through this voice that kept saying, there's got to be another way that I realized what was happening, and I just glanced at these beautiful wings, is I had outgrown in many ways not just that 
position, but I had learned what was mine to learn, and I was ready to take all of that learning and implement it in my own leadership style with a community that I cultivated, right? That was that energetic resonance of who I had become. But I tell you, y'all, I hung in there for a while through the pain and through the close people in my life, you know, trying to tell me and still just feeling like this is what I have to do, right? Until I got so uncomfortable and I began to open to be willing to see a new way and to embrace the full power of what I was called to do. And I began to vision. And this is when that fabulous <laughs> uh, symbol came in my vision of the wagon wheel. So the pain pushed me and, and it grew me and stretched me in, in incredible ways. And then I knew that I was being led, I was being called to something new. And I followed that vision and that guidance and that wagon wheel led me here. I took what is called that leap of faith, right? Those of you who have been here for a while, you know my story. I'm just highlighting it now. But... You know, Cadence, my daughter, was two, not even three yet. And we realized it was time to leave the city and didn't quite know yet where we were going to land. But the universe sure was pushing and giving us a quicker timeline than we thought originally. So we packed the stuff up into storage, got rid of so many things and set out on a journey, traveling the country for several months, living, not really living in our car, that sounds more dramatic than it is, but having the gracious hospitality of other ministers and communities that we were visiting that were housing us and feeding us and sometimes staying at hotels and various things and having such a great adventure and family time. Because my vision not only was calling me to step into my full leadership, it was calling me to get back into right relationship and that balance of life, to nurture my family and those relationships that are most important to me. So we had this very concentrated amount of time of being together for months and exploring and being open to where do we want to live and what community is going to be that right and perfect fit for our family. And I'm so grateful that it brought us here. So what I know is that spirit is always for us. That we are called to grow whether we are choosing to grow consciously or unconsciously, we are called to grow. And we will be pushed and stretched and, and invited by spirit within, by the universe, showing us all the things that are these opportunities to step into our greater yet to be. And even when that voice says, nah, I don't know, I'm not. I don't know if I'm ready yet, right? But then there's something else still pulling forward. So we can choose, because we are always at choice. We can choose to participate in this growth willingly and consciously, or we can choose to go kicking and screaming down our path of transformation. But what I've learned is that when we choose to show up and to embrace what is showing up before us, it does make it a little bit more bearable. So how can we think of pain, perhaps like compost? The painful situations in our life as that fertilizer that is needed to prepare the seed 
to bloom. And now this seed has this infinite potential within it, everything it needs to become all that it is here to be. But it must be nurtured. And one of the ways to nurture that, to grow into a strong and healthy plant, is through fertilizer. Literally, think of, you know, those of you that are gardeners. Fertilizer. It's poop. (laughs) But it helps the plant become healthy and strong. So how can we look at some of the poopy experiences in our life as a catalyst for growth. Now, I'm not trying to make light of our pain or say that it's simple, right? It's, it is definitely a challenging experience. But when we lean in and choose to allow the pain, if we choose to see that the pain is a necessary part of the process and therefore is temporary, we can open to the bigger picture of what is occurring in our life. But when we stay with our view, like right here, all we're seeing is that fertilizer, and it feels pretty poopy, right? But if we realize... It's a temporary experience before we bust out and our little roots begin to go deeper and our our seedlings begin to sprout. We can remember that it is temporary. You know, I invite you to think of a time in your own life when you have overcome something. And the pain of the moment can feel like it's going to take us out. But I know that we have all overcome things in our life. So when we can remember this perspective, it can help us to widen our view, to expand our understanding of life In these cycles, just like the seasons of nature, we all experience different seasons of life. And sometimes it's a season of internal growth, of turning within, of building a greater relationship with the divine of our being. Sometimes it's a season of bumping up against people and relationship, but it all serves as grist for the mill, right? It serves as that sandpaper refining us. And again, it's temporary. That to me has been one of the most healing gifts when I am in the depths of suffering or pain or despair and pain to remember that it is temporary. And then to allow myself to just sit with it and to be with it. Because really the suffering comes in the resistance, right? In resisting what we know we must do. When resisting that call on our heart, that causes so much suffering. And being in that kind of in-between place of not wanting to show up consciously in our life and therefore not really choosing anything, well, that too is a choice. And it just kind of puts us on this temporary hold, but eventually there will be an opportunity to move through because the way out is through. And each time we move through something, we are, remember, we are reminded of our own strength and perseverance. Dr. Ernest Holmes, this is one of my favorite quotes, so I'm going to share it again. I know I shared it a couple weeks ago. But he says, nature will not let us stay in any one place too long. She will let us stay just long enough to gather the experience necessary to the unfolding and advancement of the soul. 
Nature demands the change in order that we may advance. So how is your pain providing an essential ingredient to your vision? What is the pain guiding you to release or embrace? And are you willing to allow the pain to build resilience and not to stay with it any longer than necessary, right? We don't have to be in this painful place for years on end, but pay attention and notice what is showing up consciously so that we can choose to see it from that perspective of, ah, this too is for me. Embrace and lean into the pain just long enough to grow and to stretch and be reminded of our own strength and power, the power of spirit within us that will endure. And then choose to be open to the vision that is calling us forward. Michael Beckwith is an amazing teacher of science of mind and more, all sorts of things spiritual. Uh, he is the spiritual director of Agape Spiritual Center out in Los Angeles area. He says, suffering is a great awakener. Human beings go through excruciating circumstances. You will often hear individuals describe how their lives were changed for the better because of them. Suffering has its own gifts that are different but equally as valuable as the gifts that happiness gives us. Yes. So, again, when we're in it, it's hard to see, and I'm not saying that we want to just spiritually bypass and be like, it's all good, it's all good, this is happening, but, you know, it's all good. Allow our humanness to show up in the fullness of our feelings and our pain and our rage and our anger and our grief and our fear and our sadness. Allow ourselves to go there but not stay there. There are valuable insights in this interplay between pain and vision. Right? Pain as that, as that catalyst and often anger that arises from the pain can be a huge motivator. So pain is that powerful catalyst that pushes us to address the discomfort, to look at the circumstances in our lives that no longer fit who we are today, and then to seek solutions, to set goals, to go to turn to our spiritual practices, to get the support we need, and to build our strength to then make the necessary changes. And the vision calls us towards a better future and a desired outcome that pulls us forward, providing inspiration and direction and a sense of purpose and clarity. And by recognizing and harnessing this interplay, we can cultivate resilience, overcome pain as a catalyst for growth, and navigate life's challenges with a greater sense of purpose and well-being. So this week, I invite you to embrace the power of vision and to take time to reflect on your aspirations and goals and to vision a better future for yourself and our world. To look at perhaps the pain and the suffering, even if it's not your current experience, you can look at the world and see many opportunities that you could learn you can lend your prayerful intention to to ask what is this discomfort what is this pain and suffering calling me to do be or become on behalf of the greater evolution of our collective consciousness when faced with pain and challenges are you willing to view them 
from a larger perspective to remember that it's just temporary and that this too is an opportunity for growth and self-discovery and to remember that you are never alone. By embracing the discomfort as a catalyst for change, we can know and remember that we are being propelled towards the expansion, the expression, the evolution of our true potential. Being pushed and pulled to become that stronger, wiser, more resilient, authentic self. So let's stay focused, pay attention, and allow our vision to pull us even in the face of obstacles and setbacks. And remember, it's temporary, and the universe and your community has your back. Yes? Yes. yes. All right. Take a deep breath, and we're going to take it into prayer. <clears throat> right here, right now, I recognize and know the one life that is love, that is peace, that is beauty. This one life that is whole, perfect, and complete. I know that right where I am, spirit is. Love is. Peace is that I can lean into the wisdom and the power of the infinite that lives within me. Opening up right here, right now, to embrace the fullness of life, to glean the wisdom of the experiences of life, and to stay open to what is pulling me, to that vision for life. And even in the moments where I may not see it for myself, I know that something within me knows. Even when the thoughts of doubt or fear or that ego tendency to want to figure it out or know all the steps before we take that leap, when those old ways of being show up, that fear, that doubt, that control, I breathe into this now moment and remember the truth of who I am. And let anything unlike that fall back to the nothingness from which it came. For the truth is that the Almighty Spirit, the power, the love, the grace of God, of the divine, of the universe lives within me. And I can draw on that infinite well to be the source and substance of my life. So this day, I choose to be a conscious participant in my life. I choose to allow love to lead the way and to remember who I am knowing that I am backed by the power of the universe, fully supported, led, and guided. That there is a deep desire of my heart, a vision that is pulling me to be the love, to be joy, to be peace, to be free. 
This is the very essence and nature of life, and therefore it is the essence and nature of who I am. How good it is, how good it is to remember this truth. And it is with great gratitude for the fulfillment of this word that I release it now into the action of the law, the law that always says, yes, 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 my beloved, yes, you got this. I trust, I allow, and I let it be. And so it is.